Well, thank you everybody for, for joining. As Rick introduced myself, I'm Laila Puntel. I'm a assistant professor in the University of Nebraska. And uh, my focus on research extension, as well as teaching is all around precision act technology, uh, remote sensing and crop modeling. So today I'm kind of uh, trying to introduce some of the concepts that I use uh, pretty often in my research uh, applied to manure. And in particular, I'm gonna focus on the aspects of uh, what are the decisions that we have on the table for agronomic purposes, but also what are the aspects that we can improve upon better water quality as well. So just to give a, a little bit of background to start with, and this got mentioned throughout the seminar today, is that how we uh, contemplate the four hours, you know, uh, in terms of manure management, right? Because the way that we interpret this is the way that we can actually better use the existing tools that we have uh, available today. So the overall benefits of this is for sure, maximize my, my crop nutrient efficiency by my crop, but as well limiting any kind of impact. And how do we do that? Um, the, first, the first part is trying to get the right source of nutrient, right? In this case, manure, and the concept related with that will be estimating the right value of all the nutrients that I'm interested on, but also more than just NPK or other nutrients in the manure. Um, we can also start thinking about other properties like organic matter and other things that could uh, help us in terms of soil quality. The other um, aspect is the right rate, right? And for that, uh, having into account what are the characteristics of the manure will be really important to know uh, or understand the release of that product and how those nutrients get released over time. And that ties up to the right time. Uh, and for that, I kind of pull up the nitrogen cycle, but um, this apply for any of the nutrients that are inside of or contain in our manure, right? So the, the, the fact that we can adjust the right time, knowing how how everything works when we think about manure. So we're feeding an organic pool, right? That is gonna get decomposed through the growing season. And that is really tied to weather, temperature, right? And, and our management. So we really need to understand that complexity uh, to pick the right tools, but also understand what's happening in our fields. And of course, right place. So placement again is kind of related with the complexity of the cycles. But um, since we are dealing with something organic, uh, the placement is really tightly related with the losses as well as the efficiency of use. But really, uh, precision agriculture has helped a lot to better manage manure and here and just hitting some of the aspects of it. But uh, one of the, uh, as, you, as we saw during the presentation and the webinar, manure variability is something that uh, we can fairly manage right now and it's going to improve our time, uh, optimize that manure nutrient utilization reduce environmental impacts, right? Cutting off places where we don't want to apply or um, accessing to information from our fields uh, to protect uh, further losses. And also, uh, of course, feasibility of manure applications when we have systems of no tillage. So overall precision agriculture tools, uh, I think are having a continuous uh, improvement in management. So, I want to divide kind of the talk in two, in two main aspects. So when we think about managing manure, I think we, we have the, the target of the agriculture productivity. So how do we get the, the most out of each nutrient in manure? But then how do we get the best uh, aspects as well, as well, building soil health and taking care of the environmental quality? So in that sense, research extension efforts, uh, I think that's, the soil health aspect has been one of the most overlooked values of the manure. And the idea here of my talk and some of the concepts that are gonna touch base is that we currently have a lot of uh, data layers in Precision Act that allow us to identify places where manure can have a higher impact. So, um, and I'm gonna just talk about that in, in a second. So, soils that we are fertilizing with manure uh, have been shown to improve better bull density, aggregation, soil organic matter, and soil biology activity. So if we think about it, uh, there's more value behind manure management than just, just the nutrients, right? And if we think about that, um, we have a lot of uh, potential 
to, to manage it better. So here's just a picture or an example of, of one of the data layers uh, that we have available when we think about capturing soils that will, be benef will benefit more from manure application. This is an example of uh, in a very uh, equipment that is allowed to measure apparent electrical conductivity, but also has an optic mapper uh, that uses red um, infrared uh, sensor to capture variability in soil organic matter. Uh, this particular company is not the only one. There's a lot of providers for, uh, for these type of variables, but I just want to point it out that today we can use these type of maps available for organic matter to kind of like guide our target or our fields, right, that represent probably the highest organic matter variability to kind of have an assessment long term in terms of where we can have the biggest impact with our management. This map over here is showing electrical conductivity and I just want to touch base on the concept that um, texture is something very um, expensive to measure if we want to um, acquire by grid sampling or our typical soil sampling. That's something very unreasonable to do it by, by soil labs. So electrical conductivity has been tightly associated with texture as I show in these little graphs on the right. So in this map, for example, red zones are um, associated with sandy soils, so lower values are coarse texture, uh, lower organic matter. So if you think about, and um, let's say that the conditions of your manure or the value of nutrient value is not the desired, you could still think on, on some strategy that is more long term to build up in five years of current applications um, to build up those places that are lower in organic matter and, and, and high. Uh, coarse texture. So on the other hand, like the green one, the green regions on this map is pointed out clayly soils, right? So um, let's think about that those places could be uh, places more susceptible to ponding or accumulation of water or other characteristics of drainage. So here is just the concept that um, all these data is being more and more available and we can consider not only for the yield target or optimize our yields, but optimize the impact on soil health. So I would see this as a long-term management and it's a very way, uh, cost-effective way to increase organic matter and um, improve the physical structure. And ultimately, at the long-term, uh, having a positive impact in yields. The second aspect that I wanna uh, think about is like in association with my texture, my organic matter. Today, uh, when we think about picking the best field uh, where I want to apply my manure due to, uh, for example, saturated conditions or other variables that um, are um, limiting my, my application time, maybe uh, we can use these spatial data to select what is my best field or what is the field that I have to go first. Uh, so for this, um, well, picking like high um, elevated fields or starting for spots in the field that will dry out sooner is one of the, one of the uh, possibilities, as well as having, um, uh, for example, an analysis of, of the slope or other parameters from your, from your fields that could help you to understand uh, potential runoff on those fields as well. And the other strategy is that all that data can help you to actually target your ranges of application considering the current situation. And one of the layers that I want to point out here is the terrain attributes. So lighter information, at least in, in several states across the United States, is being available. And uh, there are several applications that allow you to get terrain attributes like curvature or slope or even um, indexes that are pretty useful like topographic wetness index and things like that, that as was mentioned today, um, will help you to identify what areas of your field or what fields are the ones that needs to be left behind in your, in your management schedule. So now switching back, switching into uh, maximizing crop yields, right? So we touch base on things that can help us or information that can help us to support decisions looking at long-term and more like uh, soil properties. 
So when we think about the, the field data that we have available, um, there's no doubt that mapping of crop yields, um, the grid sampling in complementation with organic matter as one of the layers, we can start thinking of better matching my nutrient requirements. And uh, now with all the technology available for manure, we can actually um, start making better budgets of nutrient for a particular year. The other thing is that processing all that manure flow rates that we have applied in the field, we can actually start thinking about when and um, how much we're gonna have available during the growing season. So that is the final goal, right? We wanna try to match the flow of nutrients coming from the manure uh, during the growing season. And um, one of the important key pieces that has been mentioned during this webinar is the ability of tracking the nutrients by the as supply maps. That's something that um, make a total change in terms of what, how we're gonna manage the rest of the growing season, right? So we can calculate the total nutrient applications and best manage our inorganic fertilizer plan. Now, the consistency is still been a challenge and not because of our capability exactly of what can we measure in that flow of nutrient or the spreader, but it is because the complexity that is involved, right, in the release of the nutrients for that organic pool that we are adding to the soil. So no matter what, and even with inorganic fertilizer, the uncertainty that we have about how it's gonna be available in the soil and how much my crop is gonna be able to uptake, that is a total uh, challenge and it's still being, right? So here I'm gonna just talk in, in terms of some of the technologies that we have found to be successful to manage the rest of the growing season once you already uh, apply manure. So, um, so what, some of the tools that we have is exactly applying uh, remote sense or some other technologies to manage the synthetic fertilizer to ensure that we are matching that crop requirement during the growing stages or, or early growing stages. So I'm here, I'm mentioning some of the tools that I have in mind for today. And some of them I'm gonna just mention quickly and some others I'm gonna show you actual examples. Uh, so one of the ways that we can manage uh, the in-season applications or pre-plan applications after manure has been applied is considered the, the, the concept of management zones. So now we have the as-apply data that can help us to do nutrient budget by zones. Uh, we can either pick uh, different yield potentials or we can um, pick those management zones according to my texture and organic matter maps, or even using remote sense available data if, if yields or any other mapping is not available. So that will be one straightforward way of at least adjusting the, the crop nutrient budget. The second one are empirical models, and what I mean by that is just simple equations that incorporate the value of manure into the model. Uh, in, the, in the University of Nebraska, we have manure credits in our nitrogen tool, so that will be one way, for example, that is being incorporated. Although these empirical tools, what they fail is the ability to adjust to the year-to-year -year variability and the conditions of the growing season. So really, if you have that in mind, it's still being a good um, first step to incorporate manure into your plan or, or fertilizer, but still having not completely account for all the dynamics. And the rest of the tools are increasing in the amount of um, dynamic, how, dynamics that are taken into account. So on the go crop canopy sensing is one of the tools that I'm gonna mention today. And then you can also incorporate the concept that I said before of management zones with canopy sensing, and I'm gonna show that in a second. And then we have a suite of tools that are being commercially available that are based on crop growth models. So they have the ability to incorporate or simulate the release of uh, nutrients from that organic pool that we're adding through manure. And lastly, I'm not gonna stand very much, but inhibitors have been a, at least an interesting aspect for research uh, that, um, that I just wanna to mention today. So when we talk about crop canopy sensing, one of the advantage that we have is that on the go canopy sensing uses the crop as a way to understand what is my nitrogen status. 
So if you think about it, if you apply manure and then you have um, you scan your crop, no matter if it's something mounted in your applicator or like here in my picture, I have a drone with a camera. Uh, that allows you to actually understand both the release from your manure and how much your crop was able to uptake. The other advantages is that we are considered a special variability, no matter if you have management zones or not. And then we have incorporated the temporal variability, just those particular, uh, particular weather uh, factors that affect the season, right? So the advantage is that we are cap capturing that release of nitrogen, uh, in this case, from the organic matter. Uh, I put the nitrogen losses plus minus. Um, what I wanted to mention there is this kind of allowed us to capture what happened in the early spring. If we have a rainy season or if we are having a really dry season where we kind of favor or the accumulation of nitrogen or the losses. So we should be able to kind of incorporate some of that into the tool. Now, another way that has been very um, successful these days and is being more and more used are the passive kind of sensing uh, devices. So what I mean by that is like these, these sensors are, uh, they don't have their own source of light. So they're kind of dependent on weather conditions and, and light conditions in the atmosphere. But the idea is that we can, um, independently of what kind of equipment are you using in the field for doing your nitrogen application, you're actually uh, able to do multiple flights across the season, which allow you to better target your timing of application. So this has been very su successful to actually take more advantage of that release of nutrient. And when we think about manure, if we have very cold temperatures at the beginning of the season, um, or, uh, or the opposite, we have um, maybe we, we apply high rates of manure, then we might not be able to sense the nitrogen status or stress early on in the season. So these kind of devices that are independent of my applicator uh, bring us that opportunity to adjust the timing. Another example is what I mentioned before, the idea that we can incorporate some of these available uh, in-season sensing into my management zones. So if we think about it, the first map here, you can start thinking that you create those zones to apply your manure or also to manage your, your, your starting nitrogen fertilizer. You can combine that information that probably has your organic matter characteristics, texture, uh, your previous yield, right? So we are making this as a more integrated tool. And then NDRE in this case, but could be NDVI as well. Uh, some of the some of you might be familiar with that name, with that index um, are getting even free available um, uh, today. So you can actually combine the two to do a variable rate prescription of your nitrogen that consider all of those factors. So um, we consider that this is sort of the path where we are going on um, because. Sometimes the, just the remote sensing by itself is not able to capture all the variables or all the spatial variability that we have in the fields. The other tools that I'm, I'm really excited about, and, and, and I'm really excited because they are still, they are now uh, uh, getting more and more available uh, at a commercial level. And here I'm putting three bands, but there's plenty of other companies um, utilizing crop growth models to actually guide in-season nitrogen applications. But something that I wanna just bring into your consideration is that these tools, like I'm showing on the left side, is kind of like a very simplified uh, flow of the information and how it works in some of these crop growth models, is that the manure, once you apply manure, which you can set how much, uh, how much you apply, uh, all the, so the, the properties that you include in there. Um, it goes, part of it, it goes to uh, your organic matter pools, right? So the idea is that the models are able to capture all the flows of nutrient and, and the mineralization as well as the immobilization that happen in your fields according to your weather conditions. And, um, and that's something that is, um, I would say, different to the other technologies. So um, I would say that this is the more compiled 
uh, method to incorporate the complexity that we are dealing with um, thinking about an organic product. So uh, I, just, I just know that um, multiple companies are working on having good estimations of mineralization from those organic pools. So I think the future is kind of integrating these crop growth models with some of the remote sensing uh, data that we have available. Lastly, um, and I'm not going to stand much, it's not my area of expertise, but I have to mention that nitrogen inhibitors is another technology that we can think about applying at least um, also considering some of the spatial variability that we have. Um, I know that some of those inhibitors have been compatible with manure, and this is something that uh, is getting more and more in research. So we hope that some combination of this can help us actually to better manage as well our, our applications. So wrapping up a little bit here, I think that um, all the technologies that I kind of shared today had the, had the potential and actually have demonstrated that we can manage um, manure with a strategy to not only improve soil fertility, but also compensate um, the environmental impacts that we can have, as well as improving the soil health, that which means um, soil microbiology, our carbon and nutrient availability in the long term. And if you think about, I, um, I kind of organized the, the topics that we talked today in a list of priorities. So I think that um, grid soil sampling or soil sampling uh, now in um, combination with all the mapping that we have available for textured terrain properties are really um, important information that we can include in our variable rate management of manure, or even if it's a fixed rate, um, can help us to guide which one can have the better compromise between targeting my yield productivity and targeting my uh, soil quality. The other important, um, I will say the next in my list is the manure sampling and mapping, just because that is sort of like your first step in your nutrient um, budget if you want to do it by zone or if you want to do it across the field. And then lastly, is establishing that manure value, not only from nutrient perspective, but also organic matter properties and carbon properties, and complement that with existing or more dynamic tools like the remote sensing and the crop models that allows you to um, incorporate the site-specific conditions that actually are going to be um, the main drivers of how much of the nutrients are being released from your manure in, in that particular soil. The last uh, concept that I want to just throw out here is um, benchmark your management tool. Um, there are some efforts at the university level to, to kind of establish ways that at least you can compare what you have done until now and maybe try one of these levels to incorporate to your current management. So in that sense, um, I'm looking forward to the discussion today in terms of how can we evaluate some of those tools uh, when we think about manure management. With that, I want to just say thank you and open for questions.